Today's project is to assemble the tool eye motor. And uh, this thing has a bunch of stripped screws, so I'm using a little uh, screw extractor kit. Just a little no cheapo one. And uh, a bunch of these hex, uh, hex screws are stripped out, so we're just gonna give this a try. So that one didn't work. Let's try this one. This is gonna need to be drilled out a little bit. So the secret to these guys is always keep the thing in reverse. So this is a left-handed drill bit on one side and a you know screw extractor on the other. So we'll Or something to bite into. Flip this guy around. There we go. Pop it in there. These things are a little weird. Cheapo things. And there we go. Easy as that. And then I have to stick it in my vise. Put it in forward to knock that guy out of there. Yeah. Got a few more of these guys to do, and then uh, see if we can pop this sucker apart. All right, so I got those uh, screws off. Let's start prying on this thing, see what happens. And we got a cover plate of some kind. Yucky. So that's one of the bearings, and Look in there, that is something you don't want in bearings. You got metal shavings, all kinds of fun stuff in there. So let's keep popping this thing apart. I'm not sure how the rest of it comes off. Got like a zillion of these Harbor Freight free flashlights. All right, that's that screw. It doesn't look like it goes anywhere important. No, oh, you know what? I think it's holding a uh, this inductive sensor in. So the this thing has an inductive switch uh, for the up and down position, so that uh, uh, it knows when it's out and when it's in. Now, where is there a parting line here? Looks like there might be one there. It's really hard to tell. So much rust and shit in here. It certainly looks like a different piece. Or if I could just start beating on it. <laughs> I had this motor off before. So this is an AC torque motor and all it does is it drives in one direction and gives you a torque force. So um, it's not really made for high speeds or you know, whatever. It's basically meant to to provide a torque in one direction and you can hold it in one place uh, for a specified period of time before um, before it supposedly overheats. So this one's rated at uh, 60 volts continuous or 100 volts for five minutes. And so it looks like it uh, uses, uh, let's see, two and a half watts at 60 volts and 8 watts at 100 volts, which is interesting. So that guy comes off. I've got a bunch of wires and stuff that I got to figure out how to get out of there. But this I couldn't get off before, and I'm not entirely sure why. I'm assuming it has something to do with this being pressed in. But I wish I knew. How this comes apart. I don't want to pry on anything that could damage. 
Maybe there's a set screw on this. No? So inside here, it looks like there is a... Uh, a place where you might be able to press the shaft out from the inside. There's like a center, like a center mark like you would have on the end of a shaft inside of a drilled hole. So I think that's probably what I got to do here. Find a fastener. Just crank this guy in until it stops and then see what happens when we keep turning it. Hopefully it's good. Oh yep, here we go. So turning this guy and the gearbox is sliding on out. I don't know how you can see that. That's a fun little mechanism. Fortunately I ran out of threads on this bolt that I picked up. Let's see if I can find a better bolt for this. Okay, this one's just a little longer. I got more tools, why am I not using them? There she goes. There's your uh, goofy little gearbox. So here is the uh, spring, and it looks like it probably wasn't really wound up. So I thought this might have been broken or something, but it looks like it may have just been in the wrong position or not uh, not properly wound up because this shaft would uh, uh, just not retract the tool eye. It's like it had no spring back. So somebody was in here, obviously, because of all the stripped out screws. And uh, yeah, clearly they didn't put it back together right. Just like everything else in this machine, just done wrong. Looks like we got some bad O-ring or something in here because there's, you know, crud on and everything in here too. So obviously there shouldn't be anything in here. Um, it looks like it's supposed to have some sort of o-ring seal maybe on this. Because this thing has like a groove in it like it was rubbing on an o-ring but there's no o-ring in there. Who knows. I'll have to look at that a little more. Look at some parts manuals and see. See what's supposed to be going on in there. So next step, let's press this out. Figured out how to get the uh, bearing out of there. So, so they, leave you, they leave you some uh, little places to put a uh, you know, tool to stick in there and whack with a hammer and drive the race out. So yeah, both sides just whack it until it uh, comes out. So just got to looking at this thing. I know why it was loose. So uh, angular contact bearings have to kind of be butted against each other uh, back to back. So if you look at the, uh, the thickness of this outer race right here compared to the other side, this is the thin side of the outer race. So usually with angular contact bearings, they'll put the writing on the thick side um, and the force that this is able to take, uh, like if you had this bearing locked right here, it would be able to take a lot of force in this direction and not a lot of force in this direction. So I got to whacking the, uh, bearings off this thing. 
Um, the reason why this was loose is because the bearings were installed like this. Okay, these are angular contact bearings, 7006. Uh, and when you install angular contact bearings, they have to be installed like this. So you should never see the writing on the inside of the bearing. So the writing as in that, you know, the NTN logo and the, the number stamped on it. When they're installed like this, the forces that these bearings are able to take uh, are loaded and kind of go in the same direction. Um, and when they're like that, they don't have any kind of preload. So no preload and no um, resistance to uh, forces in this direction. So somebody obviously uh, had like this thing apart, I guess, when they crashed it and put it back together wrong. The other problem with putting it back together wrong is when they're loaded both in uh, this direction and then you go to press the bearings off, they just slip off the, uh, the ball and the, um, the cage, the, the, the balls in the cage, and the balls go flying all over the place, and it doesn't pull the bottom race out. So I tried to ginger carefully knock it out, but I only managed to get the, uh, the outer race. So I'll have to figure something out for this. I'll probably find another way to hold it in the vise and whack it a few more times and get it off of there, but, you know, that's what happens when, uh, when idiots don't know what they're doing, fix something, they take, you know, I don't know how much these NTNs cost, but, uh, like 7,006 angular contact bearings are not cheap. If these are, like, cheap ones, they're probably, like, 50 bucks a piece. So... And they're junk anyway now, so they they were before. So there's rust on the uh, on the races. So it might be fine for this application because it's so it's low speed. It's basically just you know it's a precision issue at this point. And uh, junk bearings are junk.